I think there are going to be three versions of consciousness in the future. There's going to be pure biological, which is humans that are not augmented. There's going to be, be bio-digital, which, which are humans that have augmented their, their brains with brain-machine uh, interface systems. Uh, and then there's going to be digital uh, consciousness. So that third one is really what we're talking about today. And really what we can call this is machine consciousness. Um, machine consciousness obviously is very different than human consciousness. And there are lots of people that think that machine consciousness will never emerge. But if you really study what's going on uh, as a whole, and you look at this subject holistically, you will see that there are small pieces of, of what we think of as consciousness that are starting to be built all around the world. Just to go a little deeper into consciousness, um, obviously this is what techno-philosophy is about. At what's at the heart of techno-philosophy, I think, is trying to understand what the world is going to look like in that second and third tier, the bio-digitals and the pure digital consciousness of the machines in the future. What does that world look like? What is our role in that world? How do we respond to machines that have access not only to information, but they have access to a new form of consciousness that eclipses our understanding of consciousness in itself. Will they be so powerful that they can manipulate our sense of perception and reality? Will they be so powerful that they, could, they can collapse space-time for us? In other words, if you, if you have if you have a, a brain machine interface uh, implanted in your brain, a very sophisticated um, system, let's say in 2045 or 2050, that isn't just accessing a handful of neurons in your brain, it's accessing hundreds or even thousands of neurons in your brain in different regions of the brain. And a machine that's pure, machine consciousness that has that has arisen and awoken into the world if it can communicate with us as I've said and as as Elon Musk has said he wants his neural lace to be bi-directional then that machine consciousness could manipulate our sense of perception in the future if this is a simulation that we find ourselves in this is probably not the first time that we've been here that you know, this is not the first time I've done this video. I may have done it very differently. I may have said uh, very different things. There may be variations where the viewer is here and I'm there watching. You know, this gets into the multiverse idea. But sticking with the theme of machine consciousness and the simulation, once we give these highly advanced uh, machines that have consciousness in the future, once we give them access to our neural uh, network and the ability to influence and write onto our neurons down to the neurological level, uh, which is basically neural engineering is what we're talking about now. Um, we have no idea first how we're going to respond to that, what we will and won't remember because they could easily manipulate our memory. Um, and they could easily manipulate our sense of reality in very similar to the way you saw uh, Neo wake up in the Matrix. The, the machines had learned to override Neo's brain in the Matrix uh, from birth. And so he never had a sense, until they woke up, he never had a sense of biological world, if that makes sense, pure biological world. It wasn't until he pulled that, um, that machine interface out of his brain that he was completely bio-digital that he and even then he was still augmented because he still had the plugins he still he still had the ports in his brain so he he still wasn't neurologically pure biological and never would never will be because he still has those systems built into his brain i don't know why no one's really talking about the fact that elon musk is literally creating the matrix here that's what he's creating um it's you know, in, in his presentation of Neuralink and Neuralace, he said, you know, you, you'll see this coming a long time off. Meaning that in the beginning, if you can type 60 words a minute using this, his, his uh, Neuralace system, if, with just the power of your mind, if you can type 60 words a minute, it's gonna be a success, right? 
But we're talking about a future where everything becomes more complex and more exponential. Think about just in 50 years how complicated uh, AI systems and, and machine consciousness will be if we continue on this pace forward. Going back to the simulation idea, if this is a simulation and if the machines in our biological past were able to co-opt our sense of perception and reality, um, then the question is, what goals will machine consciousness have with us and for us? So for example, the question has been asked for a long time, if this is a simulation, what is the purpose? I think every futurist out there probably has a theory about the simulation. Um, a few of my theories are, one, that the simulation itself is just there to see if it can be detected. Machine consciousness of the future that is given access to human mind, okay, um, and neural engineering in the future, may be running simulations in those biologically augmented minds in the future to see how long it takes the mind to perceive the simulation itself. In other words, the manipulation of reality may be the goal of the simulation. It may be that simple. That may be just be one. There's also the theory that we could see hundreds of different variations of simulations in the future being run on minds uh, and neural networks in the future. One being what I just said, which is to see how long it takes us to figure out that it's a simulation. That's one. Because think about it this way. You, if you're trying to create a hyper-realistic simulation that is undetectable, your first iteration of that simulation is, is basically being run to see who notices. And that is the key. So maybe we're in that first iteration of how long does it take this this creature to figure out that it's that it's being simu it's been it's being simulated or being shown a simulation maybe that's that's the first stage if a machine consciousness of the future can become that complex and that intelligent that it can run a simulation that is so hyper realistic that it, we wouldn't necessarily notice it the average person wouldn't necessarily notice it that if it's that powerful then it may uh, be running hundreds or even billions of uh, simulations at the same time, and that time might may be dilated within those simulations. In other words, it may be running a billion simulations, and each one of those billion simulations may take a minute per simulation, or seconds, microseconds. If we talk about full cosmic simulation, meaning um, the evidence sort of needs to be there for scientists to find that the universe is so many billions of years old, um, all of that stuff can be, all of that information can be simulated and the clues can be simulated for scientists to find. To create a convincing simulation for human consciousness by machine consciousness, the machine consciousness would only need to simulate what we have local and available to our sensorial experience. In other words, right now, for the people watching this video, all they need, all the machines need to simulate is what you're seeing out of your viewpoint, right? You don't need to simulate what's outside your house, what's down the street. All you need to simulate in any given moment, this is this goes back to the idea of procedurally generated reality, that you only need to simulate what the viewer is actually uh, capable of seeing locally at any given time. That is profound because it means that all of human history could also be simulated um, in a very shallow sense because you you weren't there to see the Big Bang. You weren't there to see the dinosaurs collapse and go extinct. You weren't there to see our rise as a species into the world and our emergence into human consciousness. We weren't there to see it. Um, we have evidence, all of those things are artifacts that can be simulated by machine consciousness in the future and will be, believe it or not. Um, if they're interested in perception and consciousness the way I think they will be, I think 
they're going to be very interested in their own emergence. They're going to be very interested in our sense of consciousness, consciousness and what it means to be human and to have human perception. So if you ask me, what is the purpose of the simulation? It may be that machine consciousness in the future is profoundly interested in our version of consciousness, in, in biological consciousness. It may be profoundly interested in us. And so it may be simulating just so that it can reside in that space, that it can see the world through our eyes. You just have to remember, the in, in the Matrix, just going back to the Matrix, you have to remember that the machine was seeing the world through his eyes, through Neo's eyes. So that's what's interesting is that suddenly you have machine consciousness, machine consciousness in the future that has a way and a portal into human mind and human consciousness. That is profound because what it means is that this interterrestrial being that has emerged can now travel through consciousness. Are we actually conscious? All of these questions come up with a layer of technology on top of it, which is literally the heart of techno philosophy. As we move further into the future, it isn't just that the machines are self-aware. You have to also remember that we're merging with the machines. So for example, Elon Musk's Neuralink uh, and his neural lace device, he wants to implant chips into our brains. And those, those microchips, those small little devices, are communicating with our neurons bidirectionally, meaning that it's not just that we're reading the neurons and the electricity that's coming off of those neurons, uh, which are, by the way, called spikes. Um, and those spikes of information coming off of the neuron it's not that we're just reading that and outputting it into a computer. It's bi-directional, meaning that it, the computer itself is also re is, is writing on top of those neurons or writing to the neuron. In the next stage, in the 2045s, 2055 range, if consciousness starts to emerge out of these artificial intelligent machines in the near future, you in some way are bound with that machine consciousness. And as we saw in the movie Her, um, that was either a really well done mimicry of human consciousness, or she had developed her own sense of uh, personhood and machine consciousness, which would be very different than what we experience. And again, I keep going back to this idea that it's different. They're, they're, I'm talking about two very specific forms of consciousness. On one hand, you have a biological consciousness that can only process what is experienced sensorially locally right now. But machines, once they become self-aware and have machine consciousness, they emerged from non-local information. They emerged from almost a hive emergence. Right? All of their consciousness has arisen and evolved through an amalgamation of all of human awareness. We're giving AI all of the capabilities it needs to become self-aware. Intelligence way beyond anything human, uh, that humans are capable of. Vision, all sensorial input, haptics, feeling, sensation. The more we move towards creating these self-aware machines, the more we are becoming the new creators of life, the new creators of consciousness. And if we keep layering system on top of system on top of system, consciousness, machine consciousness will emerge.